I'd like to welcome our next speaker, a successful entrepreneur and business startup coach, Jorge Varela. Ben blends his passion for launching and growing companies with his leadership skills and helps founders become entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs become CEOs, and CEOs become startup rock stars. Everybody, Jorge Varela. Does this come off? Um, well, it's, thank you for inviting me back. For, uh, for most of you who don't know, I actually took Vic's um, recommendation before he even said it. I dropped out of school out of US USF and started my first company right here in Tampa. Um, at the time, everyone thought I was crazy. I did have some student loans, which I did promptly pay off in 16 months after I dropped out. The company was called Braun Systems. We launched it in 1986. We sold it in 87. We exited in 16 months, and I was totally stoked. Since then, I started 13 other companies, and I've become an angel investor. But I don't want to talk about me, um, because that's not what we're here for. Cowtown to Tech Town is something that um, happened before me. In 1996, well, it started before me, and I, I became involved with it about three and a half years ago. In 1996, Fort Worth lost 40,000 jobs in two weeks. Our population, 420,000 people. 10% in two weeks. Now, for those of you who visited Fort Worth or heard things about Fort Worth lately, you'll hear things like, you know, the new health science center or life science center um, startups. I'm going to do a little quick fast forward, and then we're going to talk a little bit about, actually, let's play it differently. I'm going to tell you how we move forward from there. If you lose 40,000 jobs in two weeks, that's panic. Right? What had happened was the U.S. government had pulled its budget for defense spending, and Lockheed alone took its West plant from 30,000 people to 11,000 in one week. General Dynamics had a plan out there. They did the same thing. And all of a sudden, the city leaders started getting really worried. And what happened next was a bunch of small and medium-sized businesses that came to the mayor's attention and said, look, we have a solution for this. We need to build an incubator. And not only any kind of incubator, but in 1996, MedTech was kind of coming up, and they said, we need to build a MedTech in incubator. Now, of course, back in 1996, what we knew incubators and accelerators to be is really not the, the functional model we have today. In other words, they thought, what we'll do is we'll just, you know, offer cheap rent, hang a shingle, and we'll be able to attract all these people from all over the world to actually relocate to Fort Worth. Why? It didn't work. So that was fail number one. So then they said, well, the problem is, is that we're focusing only on med tech. We need to broaden that out. So then they said, okay, if you have any kind of startup, you come join this incubator and let's have some fun with it. Here's a problem. Who wants cheap space if there's no services? I'm an entrepreneur. I have no idea what to do if I haven't done it before, right? And so that model failed. About eight years ago, we did a huge pivot. Now, I've only been with the organization three and a half years, and I like to take credit for some of the stuff that's happened. But really, it started about eight, eight and a half years ago. Because what happened is we brought in a new executive director into the organization, and what they did was travel around the country and exploring what actually worked out there and why those things worked. And what they found was that the entrepreneur needed support, needed something that we call the we of entrepreneurship. Right? Because as much as we may stop and think that entrepreneurship is about the individual, the superstar, the Bill Gates, the Jobs, they all had someone behind them. Jobs had Wozniak, but Jobs also had a third person. The first shareholder of Apple Computer was not Jobs or Wozniak. Can anybody tell me who he was? It's a guy by the name of Ron Wayne. And his older gentleman had worked at Hewlett Packard. He's the first shareholder of Apple Computer. He was the one that actually built the organization, did the infrastructure, so that these two superstars can go off and do things. You had 
Wozniak, who was a, uh, the IT and computer brain, and Jobs, that was a sales and marketing guy. But there was a we, a third we in their, their case. Bill Gates, who knows Bill Gates' we? Come on, you guys you gotta study entrepreneurship if you're gonna be leaders in it. Bill Gates' we is his mom. Crazy, right? But she was the one that actually did all the back end. In fact, it was her that landed IBM and later led, which later led to Microsoft's success. People don't know that. Every single operation out there had a we to it. And so what, what Darlene did and, and the team at the time is they went out and they studied and they figured out, oh, it's about a we. It's about giving the, the entrepreneurs that which they needed at a given time. It may be just coaching and mentoring, but it's also connecting them to money, right? Funding. What happened as she started implementing this we concept and developing the programs was actually kind of remarkable. We started building companies. And then we had our second problem. We built these companies up as part of local economic development, and then they went to California, to New York, to Boston to get money. That kind of defeats the purpose, right? Why are we doing this? And they're leaving us. So we decided to create our first angel network. Um, for those of you who know the Dallas-Fort Worth area, you know that Fort Worth and Dallas has a little thing. We don't quite get along. Um, we do. It's kind of like sibling rivalry, right? You pick on any one of us, we, we'll beat you up. But we are allowed to beat each other up. So we, we created this thing called North Texas Angel Network, um, along with a gentleman by the name of Chuck McCoy, with the idea of funding these companies that we were spinning out. Chuck's from Dallas. Right? So all of a sudden, North Texas Angel Networks takes on this very Dallas vibe to it. Every member in it uh, ends up being from Dallas. And so it kind of migrated to Dallas. So there went that idea, right? But we still had, it was close enough, we had money. So about three and a half years ago, when I got involved with Tech Fort Worth, we decided we're going to do version 2.0 and best everybody at the game. And we create this thing called Cowtown. By the way, Cowtown is... Fort Worth's nickname. So we created Cowtown Angels about three and a half years ago, and we did the same exact thing we did when we created Tech Fort Worth. We actually went out in the community and stole ideas. We had no shame. Now, I went all over, all over this country to every little event I could to find out what worked and what didn't. In that period of time, um, since we started it, we have stepped up and have invested, I believe the number is over $20 million in three years in startups, but as a part of a bigger group of about $60 million that have invested in these companies. We do that through something we call syndication. We built an organization, not just Cowtown Angels, but an alliance of angel networks across the state of Texas so that we could share the deals from one to the other so that no company that was founded in Texas had to go outside of Texas to get money. They may have to go outside of Fort Worth, or Dallas, or Houston. But we literally connected the threads between the different angel groups, shared best practices, and also shared deals. So that if a, a deal that came through the Baylor Angels down in Waco, if they needed another half a million dollars to make this company whole, we would syndicate it. I'd get on the phone, I'd start calling everybody else and say, hey, you guys want to invest in this deal? Check out this deal. Check out this deal. In the span of three years, Texas went from number seven and number eight most active angel size investment to number two. California is the only one kicking us. And I'm aiming for them, by the way. I'm working on that. But it, it's amazing what you can do when you start working together to make things happen. And so, you know, people ask me, why do I do what I do? Well, I'm out here preaching this. I don't get paid to do it. I don't make any money off you guys. And I do it because I believe that really the next wave of doing good is about creating good companies. And the only way you can create good companies is if you put your money behind, not just your efforts, not just lip service, but you put your money behind these companies and have, help them spit out. So, 
that's the bulk of what I do. And I want to talk to you guys. I want to find out more because I, I believe that Bradenton can compete with the big guys. And that video that we just saw, that was pretty amazing because that's what it's about. I'm going to give you one little quick story. One of our companies, um, called ZS Pharma, came to us about eight years ago, seven years ago. And ZS Pharma, the founders of ZS Pharma are the guys that did Mucinex. So these guys are experienced CEOs, right? Or they were not the CEOs, but the top level um, executives. And they called up little old tech Fort Worth in Fort Worth, Texas, and said, hey, we want to work with you guys. And our thing is, why? I mean, we kind of knew why, right? Because we had already started building a network of the, the, the tools that they would need for a startup in a new drug company to have it readily at their hands. We had relationships with the health science center. We had started building up a network of everything they needed to do research, to commercialize this technology. And we had, a, at the time, a governor that had done something really interesting called an emerging technology fund that would invest in these companies. And so these guys moved from Indiana down to Fort Worth to work with us with the hope that we will connect them to all that money, all the resources they need. In 2014, that little company went public at $112 million. Last year, they got bought for $2.7 billion. And they're building campuses in Fort Worth. So that's our message, from Cowtown to Techtown. All with just a group of five people, by the way. That's all Tech Fort Worth is. Thank you. Questions?